as a disclaimer anything that you're about to see in this video I do not encourage you to copy or mimic anything that you're about to see any modification that you do to your firearm is your responsibility and anything you do should be looked after um, by a licensed gunsmith with that said um, please enjoy the video comment like subscribe Hatfield SGL 12 gauge single shot shotgun let's take a closer look at this The Hatfield SGL single shot 12 gauge. Um, they've been around for a very long time. Um, the marketing wise um, hasn't been that great, so not too many people know about it. Um, this is going to be a excellent um, survival gun, and uh, any single shot shotgun, as we all know, the versatility of a 12 gauge single shot is uh, by far uh, one of the best reliable and uh, budget uh, survival gun and in this video um, I'm not really going to do a review because the review would go like this 12 gauge single shot shotgun you open it put around it close it you shoot it not much really talk about it there is there um, but in this video uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your gun and how to modify it on a budget uh, it don't take a whole lot of money to make these guns really really great and work really really well in a survival situation um, so let's get started all right so first line of order here is to chop this barrel off as you can see right here this is my first mark uh, this is actually at 19 inches I want to cut it off in front of the flute and make a nice clean cut um, it looks a little shorter than I like so actually what I'm going to do I went to the next flute here measured it out it's actually 23 inches from the breech so I'm going to start here, and if I don't like it, then I can come back to here. But I want to start here first, and uh, I think that'll be plenty. So first line of order is we're going to cut this off, and I'm just going to do it by saw. Um, and I'll bring you back once we get it all cut off. All right, so here we go. We got it chopped off. Here is the, the front of the barrel. As you can see, it didn't chop much off. Make sure you're within legal limits, guys, before you do anything. This has to be from the breech face. Quickest way to measure this, cleaning the rod down through the barrel with it closed, mark it off, measure it, figure out where you're at, um, go from there, tape off. Um, this right here, like I said, was 19 to this line. Um, after I taped it off and got looking at it, I think it's just a little too short. So I went ahead and went to the next flute in front of it, measured it off as 23. Um, as you can see, we're rough edged. Use a simple hacksaw, got it off. Um, now it's a matter of just cleaning it up and uh, making it look legit. So that's the next step. All right, so we got our chop down and uh, basically all the fine uh, metal work done, uh, deburring inside, outside, uh, squaring it up as best as possible. I went ahead and rounded back my flute a little bit to kind of simulate the uh, the Winchester 1300 series and how they, uh, they end their flutes. Uh, it was real simple, uh, tools needed. Hacksaw, uh, this came in handy. This is a deburring, so it got on the inside there. And uh, your standard flat file and some sandpaper. And uh, right now we heated it up and we got just some uh, some Tundra Blue um, setting on there. And uh, I'm going to let that set on there for probably a good half hour or so and uh, remove it. And if I need to put any more on there, I'll put any more on there. So, um, that's it for now, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. So the next thing we have in store for this shotgun is, um, since I've chopped off the barrel, I lost my, my front sight. So what I have before you is a really cheap solution. You can see it's 
and it comes with four different sights uh, they can be swapped out the, the light bars because um, I actually swapped out the red uh, this one had a green but this is the one that fits the uh, the vent um, so I swapped it out with red reason being is considering for me this isn't going to be much of a fighting gun it's going to be much more of a, uh, a hunting slash survival and I just think the red is going to be better in the woods considering there's not many things in the woods that are red but there's a lot of greenery so go ahead and get this unfolded here uh, I've put a little uh, epoxy on here along with some a um, uh, little bit of Loctite and it's just a matter of fitting this on here it is a really tight fit um, cleaned it I cleaned the area really good with rubbing alcohol and uh, there it is so now have a front sight um, which should pick up really well the uh, the red light bar um, so that's it it's a real simple solution but one of the cool things is is now I have extra light bars and extra um, uh, mounts for future projects which I have another one coming up uh, another shotgun so these might come in handy for that so 15 bucks and I got four of them I think that's a really good deal and if you're doing any kind of projects like this the Allen brand um, I'm not sponsored or anything like that by them but they make the same products as others other companies out there for uh, three four dollars cheaper sometimes you can find it so uh, with this project you're going to notice that uh, Alan has been a really good friend of mine so um, now we move on to the next step all right so now we're on to the next step next step for me is going to be installing sling mounts um, but in order to do so what I've come up with is I am actually going to put this recoil pad on then the shell holder and get them all in position and then I'm actually going to drill my hole through this and through this through the sling mount so the sling mount will be what attaches everything together um, so it's pretty simple you know you have one sling mount that is keeping this from coming off and keeping that from coming off and there again like I said Allen Allen and Allen so um, let me go ahead and get this all positioned on here and we'll be back and start drilling all right so I got it all positioned it's actually a really really tight fit and I don't think I'd have to worry too much about it but um, considering I'm not going to be keeping uh, the, re the original recoil well, pad, I guess you call it, plastic piece, um, underneath this. Um, I want a real simple solution to be able to get this on and off. And in a survival situation, you might not have a Phillips head screwdriver laying around. So uh, I've got it where I want it. And uh, I got my drill and drill bit. And I'm going to just go ahead and just get it done and just mark the hole, pull it all off, drill and tap it. Um, and then I think for the forearm, I'm going to keep it as close to the support point as possible. So I'm going to probably go somewhere right about there. Um, like I said, just to keep it as close to the support system as possible. I seen another guy that put one that put it out here that he built one of these. And although I think it's a really cool idea and I almost was real tempted to do it, I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to go as close to this hole as I can, considering it is a support spot. I'd hate to put it out here and have that much leverage and actually crack it, you know, across here if this is pulling this way. Um, that's just my thoughts. Um, I'm a get it done type person, so I'm going to hurry up and, and knock this out and I'll bring it, bring you back once I get the, uh, the mounts done and then I'll show you my sling and then we'll move on to the next. All right, so we got the sling mounts drilled and tapped. Um, this is the sling I'm going to be rocking here. It's just a mossy oak. There again, uh, $14.99, cheap as I can get it. Uh, now the next step for me is I bought the uh, the 
bench wood and KC uh, wood stain. So now I got to re uh, disassemble all this, and um, this is going to take the longest part. So uh, we'll be back when uh, probably here in a day or two once I get this all done. So hang on real quick. Well, here's the finished gun. Uh, everything that I had planned for it is uh, finally complete. As you can see, the wood looks a lot better. Um, not saying it was bad before, but uh, I just wanted it a little bit darker. Main reason why I wanted to darken it up was, um, uh, like we talked about, survival. Um, here in Ohio, we don't have any real light wood out in, in the woods. It's all dark, so it's kind of a natural camouflage for it. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and undo all this off film. I'll save you the, the time. And I'm going to show you my, uh, my plans for storage here in the butt pad um, and recoil pad. And uh, so we'll get on with that and then we'll, uh, we'll head to the range and do some shooting after um, we look at some uh, close-up pictures of the modifications up close. So hang on. All right, so a matter of minutes, um, all I had to do was unscrew my sling mount using the actual sling mount itself as uh, a tool, basically. And just unscrewed it, pulled this forward, slipped that off. It was that easy. Um, I want to go ahead and I'm going to show you the storage that I'm using. There's tons of other stuff out there. Um, there's tons of videos out there as well, including... Um, Wilderness Outfitters. Um, he's the same guy that did the Dual Survivor, and he has a really, really cool channel and a lot of really cool stuff. And just how versatile the single shot 12 gauge can be. But that's a whole nother video, and I'll put a link in the description um, so you can go check out his channel. Um, one of the ideas that I took from him um, is in this recoil pad here. Let's see if I can get it to. Okay, so in this recoil pad, um, it actually had this in there as like a support. I actually cut it out, and what I'm going to put in there is a piece of paracord long enough to go down the barrel. And it's tied around a piece of steel wool. Um, that actually came with uh, the Benchwood and Casey uh, staining kit. So there again, you know, we're recycling. But this, this actually works out perfect to scrub your barrel, clean it. Also can be used as a fire starter. And then I don't need to explain how important paracord is. Um, so there's something right there. It has one use, but then again, it has three or four different usages. So um, now if you don't already know, your your hole in your stock here where um, you got to put the extension in to pull the barrel out. What I've actually done is I've just took two number six bird shot, put them in a Ziploc baggie with a rubber band. Um, hopefully to try to keep them watertight. I, you know, I don't plan on submerging this gun in, in water or anything like that, but you know, you never know what's going to happen in a situation. So, um, Watertight, I just put the rubber bands around it to actually, um, so they wouldn't wobble around in there. It actually was kind of just like a filler. Um, but with that there, in there like that, and then the steel wool, that should be everything that I need. Um, right now, what I'm running on the side of it, um, just because it's laying around the house, is uh, Suprema, double watt buck, uh, cheap Walmart ammo. And um, I also wanted to mention this too. A lot of these modifications that I've done, not something that needs to be done. Um, you know, I just wanted something to do for a month, a little project or whatnot, whatever you want to call it. Um, but in total, this project, the gun is $99 at your local Walmart. You don't really need to do anything to it. Um, and then everything that I've added onto this gun, I did the math, $88.88 in accessories. Some of the stuff you can, you know, subtract out and add other things in there depending on your general purpose and what you feel you're going to need the gun for. All in all, you don't really have to do anything to it. Um, I still have a couple more things coming. That's just some um, the little folding pouches that's going to hold a couple extra ammo. 
um, in there and some of the belts and stuff that I've ordered uh, that have the shotgun shell holders in them. Um, but you know, you don't necessarily have to do it. And honestly, one of the modifications that I've seen on YouTube is lightening the trigger on these. So once you get your stock off, there's a, uh, a screw uh, right underneath here. And there's a leaf spring that goes up to your hammer. Do not loosen that, okay? I've seen guys do it to try to get a better trigger out of this. And although I had good luck with birdshot, buckshot, uh, two different brands of slugs, I was getting fell to fires. And both those were Remington and Winchester's. Which is, let's face it, it's the cheap stuff. It's the stuff you're going to buy. Okay? And you got to weigh your options. Do you want a gun that goes bang or a lighter trigger and fell to fire? Uh, personally, I'd rather have a heavier trigger. And actually what I did was I took the screw back to about where it was and actually gave it a couple extra turns. So it's actually, in theory, going to be a little heavier than OEM. But the gun goes bang every time now. And that's what, uh, let's face it, that's what we need. So, um, I'm going to take up some, some, uh, some close pictures of this on some of the modifications, some up-close stuff. And then uh, we'll head out to the range and we'll, uh, we'll put some shells through it and uh, just see how it patterns now that I've chopped the barrel down. And um, so hang on real quick. Alright, right up front guys, um, I want to apologize for the, the light exposure and uh, any wind noise that you might get. Um, it's 5 o'clock, uh, I just got done pouring down rain here in Ohio, so uh, it's pretty nasty out. But what we're doing today, as you can see, we got uh, I got two targets down there. It's approximately uh, 15 yards away. Um, should be about to stretch for a buckshot. Um, for a bird shot, it's going to be relatively close. We will go out a little bit farther after we do this initial test. This is basically a spread uh, test on the uh, the Hatfield single shot that I cut down. So um, with no further ado, let's uh, put two shots. It's going to be buckshot and federal number six game. That's going to be first, two and three quarters. pretty good so we got a pretty good hit it's not quite a perfect hit but it went off now uh, this is actually a old Winchester Super X two and three quarter nine pellet double op buck Same consistent hit, kind of off to the side a little bit. Gun's cleared. We'll run down here and we'll see what she did. All right, and here on the right is the buckshot. Uh, looks like we have two uh, 
left right above the right shoulder of the silhouette. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, uh, looks like we might have missed one. Um, I'm only counting eight. Um, here's the spread on the bird shot. So, still pretty tight. I mean, considering I went down to 23 inches on the barrel and not the 28 uh, modified choke that was uh, uh, stock on the the gun there. So, well, let's go ahead and we'll uh, we'll push this out a little bit further. I'm actually probably going to go down there to that next little uh, section right there and uh, hit it with some bird shot and just see see what happens. So let's get that set up. All right, we moved her on out a little bit to right there. Cardboard with a shoot and see uh, uh, bench wood in case see uh, shoot and see target. Now I'm gonna try and hit it with uh, same load as before. Federal number six game and. Uh, that's, I'm not going to really worry about focusing on going out any farther. And unfortunately, I don't have any um, uh, foster slugs with me right now. So I'm not going to shoot any of the Sabbath slugs I have down this barrel because it's not right. Um, so we're not going to get any accuracy out of those anyway. So um, if you like, I can uh, do a further video if I get enough requests to uh, run some uh, actual rifled slugs down this. So, Federal, number six, bird shot at, I don't know, you guys beat Mike, you guys guess. Uh, I'm going to say I was at 15 before 2025 20, right now. Um, see what we can do with it. Same hit, getting good hits on it actually. So let's run down and let's see what she looks like. Okay, here we go. So we actually got quite a few on the actual target, which is a plus. But it's gonna be hard to see because of the rain. But there are basically almost a full spread is on this target here. And just to give you a representation rep Sentation, you know, my hand covers that. So, um, I, I'm pretty impressed. I, I'm, I'm happy with the way it is. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll basically give you my final thoughts on everything. So, hang on. Well, there you have it. You've seen the shot pattern out of the Hatfield SGL single shot 12 gauge. Um, all the modifications seem to be on par. Um, do not be afraid to modify your, your guns, guys, but definitely make sure you're within the legal limits. You know, we don't want to make a felon out of you just, just because you're trying to, to uh, modify your gun and make it better for you. So research, research, research. Um, other than that, the only thing that I have uh, extra planned for this is going to be some of the um, short lane uh, adapters so I can shoot pistol and munition out of this gun. Um, I'm definitely going to get the stack pack. And the stack pack consists of a 20 gauge, a 410, and a 22, and they all fit inside of each other. Off of that, I'm going to be picking up the 357 so I can shoot 38 specials as well. And I'm also going to be picking up the 9mm Luger so that I can shoot 380s uh, through that as well, too. Um, other than that, basically, um, I'm done and I'm just going to start shooting it and having fun with it. So, once again, guys, I appreciate you guys. Uh, sticking through the video and um, I want to thank all my uh, my loyal subscribers that's been with me from day one if it wasn't for you guys we wouldn't be doing this right now and to all my new subs um, you know welcome if you have any suggestions leave them down in the comments um, anything that you'd like to see me do or previous guns that I've already had um, I will try to help you out as best as I can other than that I want to encourage you to be performance driven in life and demand greatness Thanks for watching.